Knots are super important in sailing, so this episode's gonna take you through that. Sailing virgins, sailing virgins, sailing virgins, sailing virgins, sailing virgins. G'day guys, I'm Jack. I'm James. And we're Sailing Virgins. We're gonna run you through some of the best sailing, uh, sailing knots. Even if you think you know knots, there's some faster ways to do it that's just going to make your life a whole lot easier. There's nothing cooler than knowing the exact right knot for the right situation. Yeah. Yeah! Probably the most uh, widely used knot on the boat is the bowline. You can use it in loads of different circumstances. You want to be able to tie a bowline at night, underwater, like under pressure basically, when people are like, hurry, hurry, tie it, tie it, tie it, and you want to be able to just dial it. You don't and, want to be sitting here it. thinking. Yeah, okay, that old method of making some loop and that sort of stuff, it just takes too long. Okay, so we've got the line in our right hand. Stand out with the left, and now let's just drop our right hand for now. Let's just concentrate on this part. Right hand, index, thumb, over here, and just that twist forwards, that rolling method forwards, giving us that loop. So, come back with our line, over the top, pinch, roll forwards. And now, this index finger, if it wasn't here, it would be dropping down and wouldn't be making sense. Index finger up. So, come forwards, roll forwards, around behind the tree, back into the hole. So even after the knot has been under lots of strain all night, you can still turn the knot around and break its back, pushing that forwards, loosens the whole knot. While it's still under load, you can't break its back, you can't undo this knot. It's tight. Yeah! second way of doing a bowline. Well, there's several ways, but let's sh show you uh, one of my favorites. It's super fast, I'll demonstrate it and then I'll break it down. Um, it's actually the, not used by, uh, we had a guy from Delta Force in the US Special Forces, it's the way they, they do it. And it's a really effective knot if you want to tie it around something. So if you want to tie your bowline around like something on shore, you pull it through here and that's the whole knot done. Okay, so it's really fast, a really great method. Let's, let's break it down and I'll show you. We're going to pick it up with our right hand. We're going to drape it over our left. With our left, we're going to twist it towards ourselves and then grab it under. And then with this other arm, we go through here, pinch this, and then capsize the knot. That's the whole knot. So let's show you around something. Let's say I need to tie the knot around here. Um, on my way, I'll prepare it. I'll do my pretzel, okay? And now I'm going to put it around this, through the top of the pretzel. Now, I'm gonna pull this one and give that one back. Go like that. And there's the knot, see? That is actually the bowline right there. One error with this knot is if people um, make the pretzel too tight. So let's make the pretzel. Right? And let's make it tight, like some people would do. And now you, you try this knot, and when you come to pulling it, it won't capsize. That's a problem. Okay, so um, you need the knot to actually capsize. See, it's not gonna capsize whilst it's too tight. That's why we do a loose pretzel. Yeah! Guys, I'm gonna run you through the clove hitch. Probably the first knot a lot of people would have learnt, and really useful on the boat. Classically found on fender knots. Really easy one to do. So let's have a look at it with a fender. Okay, drape it over the top. Now, we can hold that line if we like, stop us dropping the fender in the water. Now we loop around the rail and to the left, to the left of this one. And then we can put an index finger on top if we like, just to hold everything there. And then I keep my thumb in the loop here, thumb around to the right, of this one and back through there. Another way you can do this knot, really useful for when you're sort of short-handed, I would say, getting your, senders, uh, getting your fenders set up. Round, same old knot, but we just pull it through doubled like that. So it's a slip knot now. So 
the beauty of that is if I'm run, if I'm coming into a marina and I really need to quickly change all my fenders around and I don't have somebody to you know go around and do everything for me, this knot's really quick to undo. So I can run over to this and say, oh no, I need it lower. Grab this end, pull it straight through, and the knot's undone. Really quick to change everything around. But the problem with that is it's not a very safe knot. Uh, overnight, you'd never leave it like this. You'll end up losing fenders. Um, if I was going to leave it overnight, at the very least, I will double it around again. Um, that would make it a bit more sturdy overnight. Or you can also put the tail through it like that. It makes it a little bit sturdier. So if somebody bumps it, pulls through to a rather ugly knot, but at least you don't lose your fender in the water. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we're going to have a look at the round turn two half hitches. It's uh, my preferred fender knot and you quite often see it on uh, shorelines um, when you're anchoring stern to shore. Um, the beauty of the knot is that you can undo it while it's under load. So let's have a look. So back at the fender, over the top we get our round turn. That's a third of the knot already done. Round turn, so you can put your finger here to just hold everything, set the height while it's here, that's the easiest way to do it. Index finger here. Now, the knot, rather than kind of like a clove hitch goes around the actual rail, this goes around the vertical part of the line. So, I've got my thumb through that gap again, so that's one half hitch and two half hitches. Round turn, two half hitches. It's actually a clove hitch onto this line here. Because we're tying onto this line here, that's why even when this is under extreme load, you can still undo it. Yeah! Sheep bend, most people know. But what they don't know is that it's so closely related to the bowline that you can actually do the same method of tying a bowline to get your sheep bend. So we've just done our bunny going around the tree and back in, and boom, we have a sheet bend. And even better, um, you can do a double sheet bend by going one, two, around here. There we go, bunny coming out of the hole, going around the back of the tree, back in the hole, and you have a double sheet bend. The key thing to remember is fat rabbit. Has to be a fat bunny. Our right hand, we have our rabbit. This is the fat rope, very important. Let me just tie this, this, let me just tie the wrong way and so you see what happens if uh, it's incorrectly tied. So we have a skinny rabbit now and you can see that the knot is guaranteed to fail. Okay, with a skinny rabbit. Has to be a fat rabbit, so let's get this right. Rabbit, fat rabbit, we've got the tree. Now see this other line, they're facing each other. They're wanting to tie together, so they're facing each other. I'm not tying it parallel, I'm tying it so they're facing each other. I go, I don't want to tie micro Mickey Mouse knots down the end here. I'm going to give myself some length, right? And then I'm going to do the same thing. Remember that from the bowline? We have our tree, the rabbit's coming out of the hole, back around. There we have a sheet bend. That is a sheet bend, people, beautiful knot. Let's do the double sheet bend. So we have a fat rabbit. We do the same deal here, but we're just going to take this around one more time, okay? And then we go around the back of the tree, back in the hole, and we have our double sheet bend right there. Um, the doubles are better because they spread the load of the knot more effectively over the line. So whenever you tie a knot, you, you have this thing called efficiency of the knot. The, the, the ropes will actually lose efficiency. So the bowline loses about 40%, but when you do a double, or a sheet bend, when you do a double of anything, it only loses about 30%. So it increases the efficiency of the knot. Great knot, great method. One thing Jack just reminded me of, and I never ever want to see any one of you do this, and I've seen it in so many marinas, even marina staff do it, is that they go, I need to join two lines, and so I know the bowline, so I'm just gonna do a bowline on a bowline, like this. This is a disaster, I'll tell you why is because this, a nylon on nylon like that, is like a hot knife through butter. That's not going to last, that's got an efficiency of like 
It's terrible. So don't want don't want to see you do that. If ever you um, need to tie two lines, you figure out which one's the fatter. That becomes the rabbit. So this one is fatter than this, isn't it? There's my rabbit. I'm going to do one. I'm going to do two for good measure, just like I showed you before. Back around. That with a lot right tail length is important. Once I tidy it up, that is a really nice knot. Okay, there's no bowline on bowline bullshit. This is like a great knot. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you a rolling hitch. Classic spot for it. We've got a mess here. We've got riding turns on the winch. Everything's jammed up. How are we going to take the load off of this line to be able to fix up this mess? Okay, so we want to pull this line in this direction. If we just do a clove hitch, super simple like that, we pull, it's just going to slide across. That's pretty obvious. But if we do the rolling hitch, the cousin of the clove hitch, around. Clove hitch is just around to the right now. But if we keep rolling it around, around, down in the direction that we want to be pulling it. So it's that one, two, three. You can do three, four. If the lines are exceptionally slippery, you can do five turns. We'll try four and then up above it. And just like a clove hitch, back through there. Super simple. Now this is the direction that we want to be pulling this line. So let's take it back to a winch and see if we can make this work. So, so I'm going to pull it here and uh, we need more more space so we'll take it to a winch. I need a bit more um, line so I'm just going to uh, extend it out with this one. I'm going to come up here and do my sheet bend. So now I can take it around this winch. Give it a few turns. It's a skinny line on a, on a winch so I'm going to give it as many as I can. Okay, now let's see if it slips. It slipped a little bit in, in the beginning. Now I can let's wind see if it we on. can take this load. It's slipping as it's getting tighter, but now pulling it through. That'll do. See, now we have all the slack here. We can sort out this mess, and that line is pulling it in that direction. Sort out this mess, get our nice, get our nice wraps back on. We can take up the load, ease it off that winch, and everything's pretty again. Yeah! We want to make sure that lines don't uh, slip through the system. So we have to create a stopper knot. There are two types of stopper knots. One of them is, um, is quite convoluted and it sort of looks like this. I'm not actually going to show it to you today because uh, I've got a preferred stopper knot. That's, um, that's one of them. If you see stopper knots like that, it looks quite pretty, but um, it's not re really worth doing most of the time. I'll show you something a lot faster. It's a figure eight knot. So we have ourselves our bite of rope. If we were to do one twist and go through, that would be a thumb knot. But we're going to do one more twist and go through, and that there is a figure of eight. Lovely knot. <laughs> hey, hey, <perfect>. <laughs> All right, guys, hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, we've just shown you some of our most useful knots that we use um, day to day out on the water. There's a few others that we might sneak into other episodes, but these are the ones that we commonly use. And it's the methods of tying them that we really like. So we hope you get a lot of use out of them and we'll see you out on the water. Cheers. Sailing virgins! Yeah!